The question is, let's find the derivative of z with respect to different functions. Today, we're going to have a quiz on partial derivatives, but only the simple ones. So this is what I'm going to show you right now. It's exactly a review for 11.3. First, let's find something simple. I'm looking at partial derivative of z with respect to x. If you skipped last class, you did not watch my video, then uh, first of all, why? But second of all, I'm posting all the videos, right? Like you have videos, why not? But second of all, now is a good chance to check it out because I'm reviewing it. This is the same thing as write down f sub x called f partial x or uh, the partial derivative of x. To be fast, people usually say partial z partial x or f partial x. That means we're differentiating f, in this case it's z, with respect to a variable x, I'm going to put this in the box so my brain visually recognizes what we are using. 4x squared plus 3y squared. Oh, we have two different func functions, two different inputs, two different variables. I'm choosing to differentiate with respect to x. The answer is what? 8x. And what happens with 3y squared? Becomes 0. Why? It's a constant. With respect to x, 3y squared does not depend on x. So with respect to, from x point of view, 3yx does not change. Derivative of constant is 0. Makes sense? That's a small review from what we did on Tuesday. Now, you know, the same idea. I'll just put it on the right because it's not very important. We're just reviewing. The same idea is f partial y or dz dy, right? Let me erase the Russian dolls. It's going to be 0 plus 6y. Same idea here. So those are partial derivative with respect to different variables when it is a simple case. However, what if they ask us to find a derivative with respect to t? Well, I don't see t here, but it is. x and y are actually also functions, and I will color code them, blue and green. X is sine of t, and Y is cosine of t. Thus, if there's a question set, well, how fast is the rocket flying? And this is like quadratic shape of this rocket path. Well, how fast is changing with respect to t? Then you have to dig um, more. Can you imagine what this question answered? If this is a rocket, Flying with this parabolic shape, so x squared plus y squared, 4x squared plus 3y squared. What did we answer when we found derivative with respect to x and derivative with respect to y? Can you imagine what that answers? So if f is a distance, derivative gives you speed, velocity. <coughs> exactly. Yeah, so the, very good, thank you. The answer is, this would represent how fast the rocket is changing with respect to x axis, so velocity, but this way. And then with respect to y axis, velocity this way. This is how on those animations I showed you last time. When we're fixing in other variables, this is what it means to take partial derivative. Partial derivative with respect to x means everything else is fixed, is a constant. So how fast is the rocket flying with respect to north? Then everything else is fixed, just north, that's it. But what if I want to find how fast it's flying with respect to t, it's time. Know how fast it's changing left and right. How fast it's changing with respect to time. Of course, uh, these functions depend on time. So I need to dig deeper. Deeper. Let's do that. This is the formula, but I before doing the formula, I will just show you how to do it. You will be amazed, and then you will just, hopefully you will just get it. Three, this is the most important. We're all we're going to this moment. Three is let's find partial derivative of z with respect to t. With respect to t. This is how you do it. You first have to dig towards t. I usually explaining it as pockets. So uh, I, I don't know. This is how I see it. I imagine pants. Left leg or right leg is x. And the other one is y. And each have a sub pocket of t. 
And today we're going to figure out what if you have two pockets in each leg, T and S, three pockets in each. And what if T also has a sub pocket? Doesn't matter. You should be able to dig as, as far as possible and divert in different le levels of it. That's how we work in STEM in general, partial derivatives of any level. So to take derivative with respect to T, you first need to get into the correct location. In this case, say it's uh, leg X. So that will be, let me keep it in purple, partial derivative of Z. And I first have to dig out into X. Make sense? Because X has T. So that's going to be with respect to X. Then times means end, if you ever took logic class. Plus means or, times means end, product means end. So right now I'm literally saying end. I chose the leg. Good job for me. I did that. But now I also need to dig into T. So I'm taking X as a function. And I will change the color to something like red. That's the most important one. Then derivative of X with respect to T. And do you see why the derivative now is not a curly D? Because this is a final step. See, X doesn't have more variables. Since X doesn't have more variables, X is not a multivariable function. X is something we worked with in calculus 1. X equals sine T. Nothing complicated there. Since there is no partial derivative for X, we write normal derivative as X prime. But in this case, we have distinguishing situation between partial and not partial derivative. So partial z, because z has two variables, but not partial x, because x only have t. Does that make sense? Yes. Is it wrong if you write partial or no? Yeah, it is wrong. That means you give a reader idea that there are more variables there, but they're not. Yeah. From calculation point of view, it's not. Calculation will be the same. Very good question, if it's wrong or not. You should be consistent with notation, so you should tell the readers there's no more variables there. But derivative with respect to t will be cosine no matter what, so it's fine. So let me move the legs away. <laughs> Is it all? They asked me to differentiate z with respect to t, so I, I did. So this, this kind of, this is the final part. Do you think that's enough? Where else do we have t? Y. Into y. We completely ignore the other leg. And re referring it to legs actually is consistent with teaching this topic with uh, using trees, which I'm going to show you. I don't like those diagrams, but they have legs. So that's actually referring to the same thing. I like visualizing some physical object rather than the diagram. And those are pants. I like pants with pockets. Women like pants with pockets, OK? And dresses with pockets. There is a reason for that. So um, then I have to go to another leg, and I will switch the color to green to be consistent. Mm, oh, actually, everything is purple. I will switch to green later. So to go into this leg, I need to say or. See difference between and and or? <laughs> derivative with respect to x and derivative of x with respect to t. Or another leg, derivative with respect to y and derivative with respect to t. That's how we're going to be digging in. So this plus means or, y product means and. That's a logical notation here. And we repeat the whole idea. Partial derivative of z, but with respect to what? y. Then y will be repeated times derivative of y with respect to t, and that is how you do it. This is how you do it. And that's only, that counts to be a simple case, so we're going to go harder today. But the idea is, let me show you, this is important. They ask us to find derivative with respect to t, whatever I'm showing in yellow was the goal. But to get there, you cannot skip the outside the functions. That's why it's a Russian doll. There's a function inside of the function inside of the function. Function inside of the function inside of the function. Wow, that's very ugly. Uh, so you cannot find the inner one before you actually open the previous layers. And then you find out that they have even different 
levels left and right. So now you can actually go, or this one goes smaller and smaller, or this one goes smaller and smaller. So that's how you do it. You have, and then the other thing which help, will help you a lot is this uh, logical sequence, X and X, Y and Y, because it's digging. I really recommend you to see it as a digging into pockets or a cave, whatever. We're digging into X through Z, then into T through X. So X down to T, Y down to T, we're digging. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so if you were to do one of these problems, would you do both the... You have to do all of them. Is well, that your question? Both the Y part and the X part, and then add them? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. The question is, do we have to do both X part and Y part, right? Yeah, that's the question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have to do all of them if they ask for T, or else uh, you're leaving the whole half of the pants, basically. So T is everywhere. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do we need to find just the first part? Yeah, exactly. So what did we did before? Very good question. Before we asked to find with respect to X, so we just did one part, exactly. This part we did in one. This was part one. When they asked me to find with respect to X, that's what I did. So it's exactly the same function. But if they ask you to dig further, you do end and keep digging. And if there's more to dig, if T has S inside, and you will do AND, derivative of T with respect to S, that's multiplying, times, what if that one has uh, whatever, mu inside, then you do AND, multiply by derivative of S with respect to mu, and so on. You dig as much as possible, uh, but only if they ask you to. So that means derivative has deeper meanings, literally, because you dig deeper every time. It's not just one single derivative anymore. So it's possible to do like more, like two and more multipliers, right? Yeah, multiply, multiply. exactly. And we, we're going to do it today. That will be fun. Like these cases are fun. You see, that's pretty cool. So let's, let's finish this example. Check this out, how we're actually going to calculate it. This is the beautiful formula. Whatever I just wrote is here in the beautiful formula. You don't have to write it down. We already wrote it down. But I wanted to point out again, check it out. Digging to x, x to t. Digging to y, y to t. See? Or, or as plus and as products. That's the idea. Bless you. And now we actually do it. Some people write it down separately. Derivative with respect to x, derivative with respect to y. Yeah, and people don't do it. It's too much time, too much hassle. You actually just do it. Like, right, just do it, you know? Let's do it. I will. I want to prove that you can do it. <laughs> DZ, partial derivative of Z with respect to X first. Well, I go look at the box. Of course, you can reuse this thing we just did. I did it as a practice, but actually you can use it. No, I want to do it from the original right away. I'm looking at the box. There's only one box here, the original box. I'm looking at that. 4x squared plus 3y squared. Very fast. Derivative of z with respect to x, you already told me, was 8x plus 0. So I do 8x. Done. Right? Let me color code it. Times. Now I'm taking the, you looking at x variable and see if x is a function and differentiate x with respect to t. So I need another box. There's going to be blue box. A sub box inside of the big box. Derivative of x with respect to t is what? <coughs> Cosine t. Done. We're finished with the first part. Plus. Need to move pants one more time. Aw. Plus. You can keep going by yourself while I'm moving pants. My computer is just slowing it down today. What is derivative of z, original function, with respect to y? We already did that. What is that? Let me put it in black again. 6y times, and let me put this one in green. You look at y. y is given as a function. Let me look. I'll find it. I'll put it in the box 
and that's a green box now. And then green, I will put it in green. Derivative of y with respect to t is negative sign. You see, I actually don't have to say derivative of y with respect to t. There's only one variable. That's why it's not partial derivative. I just say derivative of y. There's no choices there. It's just t. And that's why there is a difference between partial and not partial. This is the first answer. Sometimes they do not ask us to do anything more than that. That's it. So this is this is the answer. Partial derivative of z with respect to t. In your homework, the same thing. Sometimes they will not ask you to do anything else. However, did you notice how many variables now we have? Three. We have x, y, and t. x and y are first inputs, la first layer of inputs, and t is a sub-layer. So actually, if they ask us to have the answer only in terms of time, we can do it. How? Do you know? Guess. What do you think? What is what we can change here to have everything in terms of t? Zooming out. X and Y. Do you agree? Box blue and box green. Plug X equals sign. Let me put it in blue. X equals sign T. Not plug, substitute, basically. And Y equals cosine T. Then the answer will be in terms of the very final variable T. So it's going to be 8X, 8 sine T, cosine T, and you have to put those parentheses. I just want to visually separate the calculations. 6y is 6 cosine t. And then minus, let me put outside. You don't have to do it either. Minus sine t. Now they actually simplify. Because sine t cosine t repeated twice. 8 minus 6 is 2. So now you can actually claim that the answer is simplified. It will be just 2 sine t cosine t and that we're gonna put it in the box that is the partial derivative of z with respect to t okay ask me this is this is like what is going on here isn't awesome i feel like look at those boxes and digging into stuff it has so many applications why are you thinking for questions you should think for like one or two questions uh Okay, there are questions. Yes. Oh, yeah, I just wanted to say that. Well, I, I was saying, why are you thinking for a question? Let me show you how it's applied in real life. Yes? Do you have, yeah. yeah. Why can't we just, from the very start, plug x and y? That is an amazing question. I was hoping someone will ask. Why we just don't plug it right away? If I plug x here, uh, whatever, into, if I plug sine t into x right away, and I plug cosine t into y right away, then you just differentiate with respect to t using literally calculus one. It's calculus one, it's chain rule. Very good question. Thank you. Uh, a, you can do that. B, nobody does it because usually we have 55 of them and it's just so much extra work. Actually, someone take it, took it out originally for you. So you're kind of undoing someone's work. Someone found that sine and cosine are repeated 55 times here and there and they just called it Okay, let's call sine to be x and cosine to be y, and then shrink the equation into very nice shape. So plugging back, you can undo someone's work. And again, if you have 100 equations, x, y, z, t, and all of them have functions in it, you don't plug them in, it's too much work. So our job is to teach you, no matter how it looks, plugged in or not plugged in, to find the stupid derivative of any level, any level, any depths, and, or at least if you see it, to understand how it was found. Thank you. See, it's a very good question. And uh, this is what uh, I found. You don't have to write it down. Z has two variables, x and y. But x depends on the function, say, g of t. And y depends on the function, say, h of t. We had sine and cosine. Then derivative has this formula. It's literally what we just did. And I have a very nice link so to practice this if you want. But it's exactly the idea. x to x, y to y. And you keep digging from z to x, from x to t. From z to y, from y to t, and so on. Okay, people ask for applications. Let me show you cool applications, and we do more examples so you understand that. We will have a harder chain rule. So, ooh, I can stop the video here to have several examples. Um,